Today is August 7th and I'm going to be talking about the new Badlands GX1 Hollow Flash, which is the second run of Badlands GX1s. And I'm going to be talking about a couple things about them, but first I got to say that the official launch was on August 6th and it was enough to blow uh, everyone's minds. Over 60% of the people who bought one of the first ones bought another one. But on top of that, which is really impressive to see so many of your customers come right back, but also uh, just as soon as the, as soon as it opened up uh, for sale, um, we sold, uh, I mean, the first run was 50 pieces. We sold out in 72 hours. Within the first 24 hours of yesterday's launch, we sold 70. Uh, so that was really crazy to see. This run is gonna be a 100 piece run. There's gonna be a lot of changes. I'm gonna go over a few things so you guys know, but I'm gonna put some links down below. And the links are um, from our actual customers who bought Red Lines and they put out videos. Some of them are polished videos, some of them are unpolished videos. All of them are just honest uh, views from people who paid their hard earned money to buy the guitar. So you can see what their reactions were. And uh, some of them are actually really detailed with uh, using a Plex machine. Um, and also I'm gonna put a link to a discussion uh, uh, where we, we talked about some of the things on the guitar in detail. Okay. So let's, let's talk about what changed on this run. Obviously, this is a hollow flash. If you guys are familiar with hollow flash, this is definitely a finish from the 80s, uh, used on several guitars, most famously, of course, Kramer's. And this is a finish that we really wanted to pull back from the 80s because of the fact that it's not only really cool and you don't see it so often anymore, but it also didn't hold up a lot in the 80s. And what's good to know now is this finish not only reflects and is beautiful like the original Hollow Flash, it, we, we added a couple things. First, we bursted the edges to give it a more kind of framed look and it looks more beautiful than just it ending on the end. But also, um, this is actually finished. Some uh, Hollow Flashes were not finished and some were finished. And what's great is, is that when we ordered Hollow Flash, um, the company Hollow Flash reached out and said, hey, are you guys doing, are you a guitar company? And you're like, yeah. And you go, are you doing a run of guitars? And we're like, yes. So they sent out a technician immediately to the shop to help us and aid us in basically making sure this Hollow Flash is amazing. And they did a fantastic job and helping. And, and like I said, it came out beautiful. Just like the original GX1 Redline, this comes in a hardtail, comes in a Godot tremolo style uh, Floyd, and it comes lefty or righty at no additional charge. Let's talk about the changes that are important because some of those changes did affect the cost. And all of the changes were based on feedback, not only from customers who bought the Redline, but from viewers and just pe people who were excited about the brand and gave us some suggestions. The first change, of course, is that locking keys are now standard, whether you get a tremolo or the hardtail, that is a standard feature, they are go to locking keys. It still comes with the poster, it still comes with a cable, but this cable is multicolors and kind of make it fun and exciting, made by Runway Audio. It also will come with the same certificate of authenticity, a thank you card, the lanyard, a hang tag, all of those cool things that it came with before. The other thing that changed is the case. So the original case was a TKL case that was custom fitted to the guitar, made in Canada. That case was amazing. No one had any issues with the case. However, they did not like the logo being painted on the front. We wanted it to look like, you know, old school, you paint it, you know, you painted your band, uh, kind of spray painted on the case, and we wanted that logo to look that way. And a lot of players, 50-50, did not like it. So what we did is we opted to change it. And so what we went to is a G&G &G case made in the United States, same quality case, and it's also fitted to the guitar perfectly. But now it comes with a stitched or embroidered Badlands logo in the inside of the case to make it look just like what you see when you see like Fender Custom Shop, ESP Custom Shop, high-end guitars. Other thing that's changed on this model is this is an ebony fretboard instead of the maple fretboard. It has a Saturn logo on the 12th fret. And that's because that matches the theme of this guitar. We thought the Hollow Flash, uh, it was inspired when we saw the Hollow Flash Luca, the artist did a poster to match this one. He thought maybe the Saturn on the fretboard would look great. I think it looks fantastic. It's my favorite part actually. Like the original Red Line, where the four stripes on the fin on the headstock matches the body. This one we tried to do Hollow Flash on the, on the stripes and it didn't work. The artist who does the Hollow Flash, and every single one of these guitars is done by the same artist. Um, came with this idea to paint the, the uh, stripes to look like Hollow Flash. Just so you know, I was not made aware of the change in my prototype, and it took me a week to, to figure out that that wasn't Hollow Flash, and that's how, so, but I want you to be clear, because just like y me, you might look at this and see that it looks like it's actually Hollow Flash on the headstock, but it's simulated Hollow Flash just to make it look fantastic. 
The back and the sides of the guitar are black. That's why we bursted it to kind of blend it into this look. Same back plate, same three piece quarter saw neck. So this is three piece quarter saw neck with carbon fiber rods. This has a gloss neck where the original one had a satin. We want to change it up, make it a little fun. The neck dimensions are the same. If you watch my deep dive on the first GX1, this guitar is essentially the same uh, body and neck shapes. So the body shape is going to be the same size, slightly bigger than a dinky, uh, maybe slightly smaller than a Mirage by ESP. But uh, if you're familiar with a Strat uh, size body, this will feel pretty close. One volume, one three-way switch like the original, but we changed a couple things. We stuck with the M88 pickup, the same bridge pickup, but we went with a single coil. And one of the concerns we had was we wanted to make sure the single coil volume did not drop off dramatically when switching. So we overwound the single coil pickup to the point where it sounds almost like a P90, but also it got really bright and we wanted to tame that. So another upgrade on this guitar is the volume pot right here is both 250K and 500. It's stacked underneath. To you, it doesn't mean anything. You wouldn't notice it. If you looked under the hood, you'd see that there's a stack pot. And that's because that way the bridge sees 500K and the, and the single coil sees 250K. Right now I'm plugged into an Engle Fireball 25 with the reverb. Now let me go ahead and just show you on gain, and I'll do clean too, but on gain, how the single coil kind of competes against this humbucker. Here we go. see right there that there is just no compromise in the volume. The single coil is holding its own and it really adds that kind of stratty kind of heavy attack. And again, I'll go over some clean tones and stuff with it as well. Uh, this has the graphite nut because this is the hardtail. And then if you get the tremolo, you're going to get the Floyd style Goto bridge with a locking nut. Um, the other thing standard, of course, just like the first one, nine gauge strings, they're Daddario nine gauge strings. If you get the tremolo version, you're gonna get the hex hider. Uh, absolutely 100% of all of the buyers of the first line love the hex hider. It was one of the highest loved accessories that came with everything. So obviously we want to continue to put that in with all the guitars. The hex hider is a uh, Allen wrench tool that magnetically connects to the back of the headstock and allows you to make quick uh, adjustments to your bridge or the nut when needed and not have to worry about it. It will also still come with a V-pick um, and the V-pick for this one is gonna be translucent, translucent blue instead of the translucent black on the red line. And so obviously we're variating that as well, which is gonna be, I think, cool. Again, we really wanted all the accessories to be part of the guitar. Something to note, some feedback we got, I don't want all these accessories, can I just have the guitar at like a lower price? Part of the problem with that is the accessories were not just paid for, they were relationships we have, you know, our friendships in the industry. There's a lot of people who came forward and helped Badlands exist. Obviously, everything from Hex Hider uh, taking care of us and V-Picks taking care of us, runway audio, cables taking care of us. And what I mean by that is sometimes those arrangements were uh, in exchange for uh, like sweat sweat equity, right? Us helping with other things. Sometimes it was just uh, you know massive discounts to help this happen. Um, I should point out that the potentiometers that we got, the stack ones, those ones we got from Flipside Music. If you guys are familiar with Flipside, Ike at Flipside Music, um, he needs a, a big shout out for helping us out. He not only ordered these because we couldn't get them any other way, he ordered these for us. He did it at no charge to us. He didn't make a single penny. So definitely support Ike at Flipside Music. I'll put a link to his website and to his store in Colorado. And that's the kind of support we've had. The reason I tell you that is, if we were to remove the physical dollar cost from the accessories, from the guitar, it wouldn't even make up the shipping. And so it's not a real big save for you guys um, because like I said, we put forth uh, 
other arrangements to get that stuff put in there is because we were passionate and we wanted including, and I should also point out, the artwork and all of the presentation that comes with the guitar that's done by Luca. Obviously, Luca is a partner in the company, and so he's not being paid a salary for that. If we had to pay an artist like Luca to do all this stuff, again, the price would be astronomical. And of course, we would not put that in the guitar because that cost would be exponential to you. But what I'm trying to tell you is all this stuff that comes with the guitar, it's there because we thought it'd be fun, exciting, and we were able to work it out with years of being in this industry, friendships, relationships, we were able to make this happen. And everyone who's involved with making those accessories, Hex Hider, Runway Audio, um, uh, v Picks, <laughs> I Could Flip Side Music, um, you name it, they've been amazing friends to take care of us in all the ways they have. Okay, so next, stay, uh, we have uh, 22 nickel frets. These are jumbo frets like the first one. The neck profile is the same, everything's the same. Um, however, some people did ask about stainless steel. Look, stainless steel frets were not really a thing in the 80s guitars. I'm not saying we're not gonna do it. I'm saying that there will be a time when we think stainless steel frets make sense. Of course, this guitar is still made in the USA like the original model. And the importance of that is we have a full disclosure on our website, disclosing every single component and where it came from. L legally wise, this guitar is considered made in the USA. However, we want you to know exactly where every single component is sourced, including the case that's made in the USA. The tuners, the bridge are made in Japan. Pickups are made in the USA. The guitar itself is made in the USA. But like certain components are just gonna be like this back plate is obviously its main China it's because this is the only place we could find a back plate that still looks like the 80s. In fact, the company doing this did most of the ones or a lot of them in the 80s. So, so it's no different than those. Okay, so I think at this point I've covered all the exciting things. The only thing I need to also mention is, like I said, this is limited to 100 pieces. A change to the formula was we they just didn't have capacity, just like we did the 50 uh, guitar run. That was our max capacity. We're really not past 50 piece run capacity. But what we decided to do was the first 50 who pay full price, they get their guitar in six to eight months. Now that we've extended the time, the first one was promised to be three to four months. We found that was too aggressive. It really worked the shop too hard. You know, people need a life uh, besides work and we were making it almost impossible for that to happen. And so we've decided to, to obviously uh, value that there, you know, time people have time with their friends and families besides work. And so we, we, we moved it to six to eight months on the first 50 guitars, but that's good for the people that may not have all the money to buy this guitar right now. There's also 50 slots where you can put a deposit. It's only a 10% deposit on the guitar. And then you will get in the second production run, which will start at about six to eight months right after the first 50 ship. So why don't we just play this guitar? Okay, let's get into it. So like I said, uh, I'm in the Ingle Fireball 25 through a 112 cabinet. Like I said, the bridge pickup's the same, so you can watch the first video of the deep dive and see how I go through and meter that and show you that it's a high output 80s style pickup. Yeah, that's nice, right? It bites, but it does not drop off. And in fact, like I said, that was the important thing. The middle position blends the pickups perfectly. And switch the amp to clean and we'll go ahead and, and you can hear these two pickups in clean. Okay, so let's start with the bridge pickup. We're on the clean channel of the Ingle and we have a little reverb delay. Now back to that neck pickup.
Now the guitar comes with nines and it ships with nines. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to that bridge. I didn't mention I should say are things that just duplicated from the very first run and again if you're curious you can watch the video on, on the video on that also you can go to the Badlands website which is down below and find out more about the guitar and also something else to point out is uh, some questions we got with the hollow flash are they going to be identical to each one the red lines themselves were not identical to each one they were really really close they were hard to see what was subtly different we're expecting the hollow flash to be similar to that i mean obviously each one will be different we have pictures of two of the hollow flashes i'd also like to point out no pictures of this guitar have been photoshopped in any way Sure, of course, if you're familiar with hollow flash, it catches lights differently and sometimes it will be really sparkly and beautiful. And sometimes it'll look like a broken mirror and it'll just be kind of dead and flat. And I'm gonna put a picture of that. I hung it in my front room of my house and what I noticed was in the morning, it looked amazing. I mean, it was the most amazing thing to wake up to see every day. But at night with all the windows shut in the house and really only one source of white light, uh, it looked like a, basically a broken mirror. That being said, if you're interested in getting one of these guitars, we appreciate that. However, the whole idea is to keep doing more exciting things, challenge ourselves, have some fun, and again, make guitars that are a little bit more obtainable. Of course, these guitars are extremely expensive because of the fact that we have to make them, you know, we're making custom, semi-custom, I should actually say custom. They're made custom, they're made in the USA, there's just gonna be expense to that. However, we're trying to do it in a time frame that's much faster than some of the big brands and a price point that's more obtainable. In fact, think about this. Uh, one of our buyers said, said something perfectly. He bought a custom shop from a large name company and he said the deposit for that guitar was what he paid for his Badlands and that was really amazing for us to hear because again, like I said, they're not inexpensive, but they are priced as aggressive as we can get them. All right, so if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. Also, uh, as of shooting the vid this video, there's about a dozen or so left, maybe more. And uh, so you guys can check the website for availability. When they're gone, they're gone. And uh, I hope uh, you guys at least take a look if you find this exciting. Or we're hoping, like I said, this inspires other companies to do exciting things and maybe be more aggressive with their pricing too. We're not just trying to take the market. As you see, this is a very narrow market that we're going after. We really are trying to do something fun, but also maybe inspire some other companies to try something fun too. And also something not so much like every guitar is $10,000 and unobtainable in any way. So, I mean, I hope that, I hope that makes sense. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for your time. Till the next time. Know your gear.